Hi, I'm Jack Lifton, and I, I'm the co-chairman of the Critical Minerals Institute. And I, I want to give you a synopsis of what we're going to be talking about today. We're now at an inflection point for our society. If we can secure the supplies and the processing capacity for the minerals critical for the technologies we now take for granted in our daily lives, then our nations will flourish and grow. If not, then our standard of living will decline and those who have the critical minerals and the industrial bases to refine and fabricate them surge ahead of us. Our politicians and policymakers are woefully ignorant or at least uninformed of this reality. This is the greatest danger to our lifestyle and our security. It, it dawned on me because, because I've been doing this for a very long time that something has really changed in the last 25 years. For most of you, you won't be concerned about, the, I know, something that's happening over 25 years. But I really noticed it. Back in 2007, as I recall, I, I enumerated the uses of what I then called the technology metals and the amounts of them necessary. Well, uh, for example, in that year, Lithium, which is only used for batteries and some, some chemical purposes, uh, was produced in less than 16,000 tons a year. That might sound like a big number to you, but in that same year, perhaps a billion tons of iron were produced. Think about it. So it was very minor. And the batteries we, we used in those days were for our portable electronics. They were small. Let's advance 15 years. Well, the demand for lithium now is huge. Uh, this year alone, we'll produce between 600,000 and a million tons of lithium compared to 16,000 tons in 2007. That We can produce that much lithium because we have access to that much lithium. But the other technology metals, like the rare earths, germanium, uh, the platinum group metals, which most of you really don't think about, uh, we were already producing, even back then, about as much as we really could economically. And of course, the demand was rather small, but we could cover that demand. Today, let's look at the rare, the rare earth materials. They're mainly used for rare earth permanent magnets. Back in 2007, the biggest rare earth permanent magnet you would have, which you never saw, was on the, uh, the hard drive on your personal computer. That might have used 10 grams of the rare earth metals, uh, 10 grams, one third of an ounce. Well, uh, there was no problem getting that material. Today, uh, an electric car using a rare earth permanent magnet motor uses between two and a half and five kilograms of magnet. Think about that from 10 grams to 5,000 grams. Now, there's a problem. Producing that much material, is it possible? We have to look into this. Is it economically possible, even more important than whether it is possible? So that's just the rare earth metals. We're gonna talk in this conference about perhaps 30 metals that are in the same boat. The the so-called minor metals, many of which are the technology metals, and really all of which are the critical metals for our time.